The Army Golden Knights jumped into events across Knoxville last week celebrating the return of the Smoky Mountain Air Show. That military demonstration team commanded today by an East Tennessee native was formed decades ago by some parachute pioneers. Tonight we roll back the clock and reintroduce you to a Golden Knights original. So they, we got 300 of these B-12 parachutes. And we went His early career had plane. Dick Fortenberry taking off in a lot of planes, but never landing in them. Uh, that's where we got our first parachutes. This is Sergeant Dick Fortenberry. Fortenberry was a parachuting pioneer. He captured this footage on a helmet camera during a jump in the mid-1960s. You know, you don't have a feeling of falling. You just have a feeling of speed because, you you know, you got 120 mile an hour wind passing you. Growing up, he was bitten by the freefall bug after seeing movie reel footage of even earlier daredevils as a teenager. I was probably uh, 16, 17, and I thought, I don't know when or how, but I got to do that. Uh, yeah, you remember the first jump, and uh, uh, it's not as clear as some of the rest of them because, you know, there's so much adrenaline running and everything. The climbing to altitude, the anticipation, you get out, you get open, and it's the quietest thing you've ever heard in your life. You can hear people on the ground talking. I used to tell everybody my first five jumps were night combat jumps, because so I had my eyes shut and they had to fight me to get me out of the aircraft. <laughs> Jumping became far more than an adrenaline rush for Fortenberry. In the mid-1950s, it became his mission as a soldier in the U.S. Army. In our day, it was, uh, we were pioneering. We were just starting things, just trying things. Uh, we were known as the U.S. Army Parachute Team, officially. And they tinkered with cutting-edge chute designs that included lots of trial by flight and fall. And you cut a hole in the back of it to make it go forward a little bit, and it'd do a 360-degree turn, you know. And uh, we did some pretty wild things back in those days. His team pressed for longer free falls. Standard jumps gave a skydiver around 60 seconds to maneuver before pulling the ripcord. But Fortenberry and his team doubled that, pushing the amount of time without a chute to well over two minutes. It meant jumping from altitudes that made oxygen masks a must. Yeah, the highest I ever jumped was 30,000. The other thing is about 60 below zero up there. But his mastery of the high-altitude acrobatics grew, landing Fortenberry on the Sports Illustrated cover in 1962. In his career, he helped set close to two dozen world records for precise landings by touching down on a disc smaller than most dinner plates. First person to ever make a dead center landing in competition. You were the first person to make a dead center landing. Yeah, 1960 in Sofia, Bulgaria. The team was making history and gaining fame, but Fortenberry describes gathering his fellow parachuting soldiers to brainstorm a show name. We put uh, colors down on one side and we put names down, or animals down on the other side and started cross-matching. And of course, you know, a bunch of guys get together, you're gonna get pink pelicans and all this stuff. We let them get all that out of their system. But then I got to thinking that the Army's colors are black and gold. And the West Point football team are the Black Knights of the Hudson. Why don't we be the Golden Knights? I asked the team about it, and they said, hey, that's a great idea. They all voted on it, and that's why the team got its name. I wish we'd left the EEN off so it would be the Golden Knights instead of the Golden Knights because you don't see the bluish angels or <laughs> any, the reddish pelicans or any of that. So, but anyway, it's, it's a good show name, and people uh, identify with it. Fortenberry recorded that memory and many others in his book, No ETA, short for Estimated Time of Arrival. All those stories, I got them right directly out of my logbooks. So they're all true, the dates are accurate. The modern day mission of the Golden Knights is to support Army recruiting and public relations. I think they're probably uh, the best uh, young men and women that the military can put out. Proud words from an original who helped turn a hunt for thrills into a military mainstay. Dick Fortenberry died back in 2017. He wrote his own obituary saying in part, I finally died at age 79, but not before God gave me a wonderful and exciting life. You can read more right now at WBIR.com. Beth.